I do a little bit more digging and basically I find out that this adoption agency has been flagged for black market ado um, adoptions, which is crazy, but also very common. Hey guys, it's Rebecca, only black girl checking in for the weekly video. Hey. Anyway, so what I wanted to talk about this week, as you probably know by the title of this video, I wanted to discuss the whole journey of searching for birth families slash parents. As somebody who's done this myself, I started this process back in 2014 and it was a lot for me. I know this process is different for every adoptee. Some adoptees don't even want to open that can of worms. Some adoptees are really like, yeah, let's go get it. And for really everybody involved, it's a really big emotional process because you're basically opening a can of mystery worms and you don't know what the fuck is about to happen. There's all kinds of stuff that can happen and there's no way to ever really prepare for it. So as somebody who's gone through this process myself and I'll talk about um, my journey with this in a little bit, um, but I just wanted to kind of share some advice and tips with you that I learned from going through this process because it was a grueling process, girl, let me tell you. But before I dive into all that, y'all know the drill. If you have not done so yet, girl, click that subscribe button like I'm, did you do it? You, you click it. It's, I mean, it's, it's right there. Just click it. Did you do it? Okay. So, <clears throat> searching for birth families. Before we even get into the actual searching part, I just want to talk really quick about the pre-prep of the prep, prep, prep. Okay? First of all, adopt parents. I need you to... Pay attention. Make eye contact with me. Do you see, or do you see me? Do you see my lips moving? This is for you. You need to stay the fuck out this process, okay? I understand that as parents in general, you're gonna be concerned for your kid, I understand that. However, this is not your life, this is not your family, this is not your lane to be swerving into. If your adoptee asks you to go on this journey for them, if they ask you for help, that is one thing, but what you don't need to be doing, listen, I have heard of so many adoptive parents who like, do the searching on their own or they make contact with the birth families on their own and do all this and they don't do that this is not your lane to be in this is not your life it's not your journey to be meddling in girl i'm gonna need you to take a seat you are here to support us and while we go through this journey when we decide that we want to open that can of worms this is for us to do not for you you don't you're not the one who has to deal with all this emotional labor okay we are so you don't get to decide when we do it how we do it blah blah blah, blah. sit over here Wait for us to give you instructions on what we want to do or even if we want you involved or not. Sometimes we don't. I do not, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but seriously, adopted parents, I really need y'all to stay the fuck out of this and really y'all need to take a back seat and just wait for your instructions. That is your role here, okay? Okay, for adoptees, I really want to reiterate that this is your game to play. This is your lane. You get to decide and control everything here. Do not... Let anybody try to influence you to do something you don't want to do. If you don't ever want to reach out and find your birth family, you don't have to. If you want to do it by yourself, you can do that. If you want to involve every single person around the world to help you do this, you can do that. Because so many adoptees, when they go through this process, they get pressured by other people, by outside people talking in the ear, telling them to do this, this, and this, and this. And they just get so fucking overwhelmed and are forcing to do shit they don't want to do. And I just want, y'all, look at me. Look at me, we in this together, I understand. Do not let people try to push you to do something you don't wanna do. You need to take the reins of this. This is your story, this is your life, girl. You need to control this. All right, now that I have my inspirational talks out the way, let's talk about the whole process. So, I started my process in 2014, like the actual search process. Now, I have actually known about my birth family since I was little. That was one of the first things when I figured out that I was adopted. I was like, oh, well, what about my birth family? And I talked about this before, especially on my blog. My parents really had the adoption thing down really well because adoption has been in my family for generations. They just didn't have the race part down very well. So when they had the adoption talk with me about my birth family and blah, 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 they actually did really well and I always kind of knew the circumstances behind it. I'm sorry I keep waving this paper around. I know I had to write shit down because there was so much I wanted to cover today. So when my parents and I talked about adoption, they always made it very clear that the reconnection journey was gonna be my own. Basically gave me the whole year adopted talk 
And along with that, it was whenever you are ready to reach out to establish connections, we will do whatever you need us to do to connect with your family. They always told me the circumstances behind it. So I always have known that it wasn't like, I wasn't put up for adoption um, out of like hatred. I was basically put up for adoption because my birth mother was an escaping abusive home and she was living on the streets. That was the only way she could get out of her abusive home. She already had a child and basically it was just a, I cannot provide a life for this child that is gonna be suitable. So I always kind of knew the circumstances behind it. So I always felt that when I was ready to start my journey, it wasn't gonna be a, a negative thing, right? I was just had to do it on my time. And I took my time, as you can see. This baby right here, this folder, is literally every single file that I have on my adoption. As you can see, it's really not a lot in here. But what I'm gonna get into is a lot of search tactics. A lot of us, we probably don't have a lot of information on our birth families. Especially if you wait till you're older, the longer you wait, the longer it's gonna be to track people down. Just because it's time, right? People move, people get married, names change, blah, blah, blah. And it's just gonna get harder and harder and harder. Now that's not to say that you should start your search earlier at all. I'm just saying. You might have to search a little bit harder when you do get to it, especially if you don't have like piles and piles of adoption paperwork, which pretty much nobody has because the adoption industry is trash. I have a lot of my basic adoption paperwork. However, a lot of it is redacted. Um, so really the only information that I had to go on when I was ready to start my search in 2014 was I knew the first name of my birth mother, Alicia. I knew their last known city, which was Houston, Texas. And that was about it. <laughs> that was literally everything I had to go on. Again, because it's been 23 damn years, who knows? She could have been remarried, names could have changed, like so many shit could happen. And especially because when I was adopted at the time, she was homeless. So she was bouncing from shelter to shelter to shelter. So there was no like last known address I could even go back to. The name of my adoption agency that I went through, a excuse me, AAI, I called them. They really didn't offer me anything that I didn't already know. So they were of no help. So I had a last name and I had a city that I knew she lived in 23 years ago. Basically what I did is good old Google and good old cold calling with the shit out of every little thing that I knew. I was Googling Alicia Houston, Houston adoption agencies. I looked up the, the addresses that were, any address that was listed on a piece of paper in that adoption papers, I was Googling. I was cold calling any phone number that was on the documents. Now the interesting thing, this is kind of fucked up and I've talked about this on Tumblr. The interesting thing is, is as I'm going through all this paperwork, I finally get to um, basically like the middleman agency. So it's the agency that the, the birth family goes through. There's kind of like two agencies involved. So there's like the agency that the birth families go through and then there's the agency that the adoptive parents go through. And they're kind of like the middleman to each other, right? I call the numbers disconnected. I do a little bit more digging and basically I find out that this adoption agency has been flagged for black market ad um, adoptions, which is crazy, but also very common. Sadly, a lot of black market adoptions happen around the world all the time, even today. Finally, I catch a little bit of a break. I finally find a last name. So what do I do? I go to go good old face, good old Facebook, and I type the, the first and last name in, and it comes up with like a list of people. Basically go down the list, there's a whole lot of people with that name. I find the people who live in Texas, and I'm just like, look, I'm just gonna have to go for it. What I just needed was I needed that last name and hope to God that it was the person on Facebook. Found her and I, I saw the name, the name match, the location was Houston, Texas. I brought my mama where I was like, what do you think? And my mom's like, y'all look exactly the same. Remember that adoption agency that was under investigation by the FBI? Turns out they told her that I had died a year after my adoption. Adopted mom and my birth mom were writing and exchanging letters and pictures and stuff for like the first year-ish. And then of course, you know, we moved, she moved, she was homeless, so she was switching to shelters and they just kind of lost contact. She finally did kind of get back on her feet. She went back to that agency to try to track down a current contact number. And that is when they told her that I had died 
from a surgical procedure a little after I was a year old. The thing is, is first of all, I didn't know how to have this information, but I did actually have a procedure when I was one years old. There was something fucked up with my umbilical cord and they had to do surgery. I still have a scar right here on my belly button. For first of all, how they even know that, I don't know, but it was really weird. <laughs> because I really did have the procedure, but obviously I did not die. So this whole time, she had never even tried to reach out to me because she thought I was dead. For 23 years, she thought I was dead. It all happened in 2014. Clearly it's 2018 now. I still have not met them in person. I'm still kind of working up to that. Like I said, this is a really big thing. I'm now kind of feeling more comfortable with like reaching out and maybe starting that process of meeting up in person. We stay in touch. We, you know, I have her phone number. We call, we talk every once in a while, we chat. I also found out that I have four biological siblings. I knew about my oldest brother because she already had him when I came along. I have three half siblings, three younger half siblings. So that was crazy. I basically found out I had a whole second family that I didn't even know about. We talked to pretty much all of them. We know we're on Facebook and Instagram and we text and we call every once in a while. That's all cute. I say all that to say that's kind of why I'm stopping before the whole like the actual reconnection part because I don't feel I'm qualified to speak on that until I actually go and meet them in person and do that whole thing which is going to be a lot so don't expect it anytime soon okay? Okay, but now that you kind of know how my reconnection story happened, here are some tips that I can give to you. Gather up as much information that you can find. Track down, what it, go to your parents. They should have copies of your paperwork because honestly, it's just, they're legal documents. You should be keeping any legal document you have for literally anything in life. Keep it. Gather up whatever information you have and like centralize and organize it so you know exactly all the information that you have because that's going to help you with your search. Secondly, there's also another way that you can do this without doing all the inspector gadget shit on Google. You can also just go get a DNA test. Now this doesn't work for everybody because the whole way a DNA test work is the other people's DNA also has to be in their system. So I do caution you um, on that route. It also costs a lot of money. That shit is expensive as fuck. But if you do, if you have absolutely no leads at all, I know a lot of people who have done it this way, especially international adoptees, because as y'all know, y'all's paperwork is all kinds of fucked up. Y'all have even, y'all have like no shreds of paperwork. I get it. I have several international adoptees in my family and their paperwork is a load of shit. It's fucking ridiculous. Um, but I know a lot of people who have done it that way because it's, because if you don't have any paperwork and you don't have any information to even start with, that can at least give you somewhere to start it may be like a third cousin or whatever but you can work your way up and at least it's a name at least it's a location at least it's a starting point so the dna test is an option if you want to go that route Next, google the shit out of everything every name every phone number every address google it and just eliminate it as you go and eventually i promise you you will find something something that at least leads you to the next step you have to. There's a trail of something somewhere. And I also really, 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 really want you to think about boundaries that you want to establish. This is very important because like I said, you never know what the fuck is going to happen for yourself, your adoptive family, and your biological family. For example, as I mentioned in the beginning, I specifically told my parents who I do not want them involved in this search. I told them right off the bat, I was like, thank you so much for giving me all this information, get me where I'm in today, but I feel like this is something that I need to do by myself. I did not want them involved at all. The boundary they have respected. They, they don't even ask me questions about it. When I'm ready to talk about something, I go to them and I talk about it. On the other side, I basically made the same boundary. I said, I need to do this at my pace. So what I need you to not do, I, I don't want you calling or texting me all times of the night. I don't I don't want to do that. Don't be pressuring me to come see. Don't, don't do that. I'm going to do this at my pace. And it's worked very well. And I'm very, very happy that everybody has been respecting my wishes. My parents don't bother me about it. My adoptive family basically does not bother me unless I go to them first. And that's just what I needed, okay? That's how I can handle this, especially when I have 9 million other things going on in my life at literally all times. That's what's worked for me. You 
you need to take time to establish your own boundaries and what you want and what's going to work for you. But thank you for watching this long ass video. That's basically everything that I wanted to cover on this topic. Let me know in the comments what your journey was, if you started it, if you've been thinking about it, if you have any other questions about um, this topic, just let me know down in the comments. Let's get a conversation going, all right? All right. That's it, y'all. I'm out. Bye. Hey, y'all. Y'all thought I was dumb, but I'm not. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you have not done so yet, please, 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 please hit the subscribe button down the corner. It helps me. It helps you. It helps me help you. And you know, I very much appreciate it. Virtual high five to you. Hey, you could give this video a thumbs up and go ahead and share it with whoever you think could use this information. Go ahead and do that. And I will catch you guys on the flip side. Ha <laughs> ha!